Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel where we are doing my third NFL mock draft of this 2023 draft process. And we have just come off the NFL Combine where we have learned a lot more about these players. And this will affect their draft status, who I want to pick, so, and so forth. And also, it is most likely that Aaron Rodgers will be traded to the New York Jets if he goes to another team. As he has been meeting with Jets personnel and front office guys all week. Talks have been going very, very well. So if Rodgers is traded, which I think is now way more than likely, is he will most likely go into the Jets. So we will be making that trade within this mock draft. So let's go ahead and get in. Seven rounds. Slow speed for the first round because I like seeing how people are doing. And we're picking the Green Bay Packers. So first things first, we're going to go ahead and trade with the New York Jets. Their first and second round this year and the second round next year make it turn into a first round conditional if Rodgers plays well. For quarterback Aaron Rodgers, offer this trade, going to be accepted. And so with that, we picked up two extra picks in this year's draft in the first and second round, which I think is really, really key as there's some players who have been rising fast after the combine that I want to try to get. So let's go ahead and start this NFL draft with the Chicago Bears on the clock. In this, they pick Will Anderson and then CJ Stroud, Jalen Carter, Anthony Richardson, which is very high for that, Tyree Wilson, Peter Skaronsky, interesting, Bryce Young to the Raiders, Christian Gonzalez to the Falcons, Will Levis to the Panthers, Jackson Smith and Jigba to the Titans, Devin Wilson to the Titans, and Miles Murphy to the Texans. Now, now that this happened, because JSN went way higher than I thought he was going to, I'm looking at Quentin Johnson, because this dude is the prototypical Packers player. Six foot four, 215 pounds, Great X receiver, has some struggles with hands, but like guys in the past like Devontae Adams, Christian Watson, Packers like taking guys like this. And so he is very, very explosive, good X receiver, had fantastic year last year with 60 receptions, over 1,000 yards and six touchdowns for TCU. And let's go and take a look at his combine. Let's go for participants. No, not Syracuse. TCU. Quentin Johnson. So, six good start within two years. Really, really good. He was let's say a 6'3. He had a 4.5 vertical jump. So it looks like he could be very, very good for the Packers. And for compares to Alshon Jeffrey, who is a really good player. And so. His hands are concerned, but that this is the type of guy the Packers like picking up. So I'm actually going to go ahead and take Quentin Johnson with the 13th overall pick here because I think he is really, really good. So let's go ahead and draft Quentin Johnson, wide receiver out of TCU. It's ironic taking him in this draft when we just traded away Aaron Rodgers. We finally got a receiver in the first round. I know, I know. And now this one at 15. This is the one I am very iffy on because we need safety. We also need an edge rusher. And Brian Branch and Lucas Van Ness are two incredible players. In my last mock draft, I took both of them in the first round with 13 and 15 because they are, I think, both are really good. Now, the question is, is there any tight end I want to trade down for? I don't think so. I don't think I want to trade down at all. Or maybe I do drop down five spots, but then I risk losing one of these two. Let's take a look at their combine results. Alabama, Brian Branch, looks to be really good, 6'4", 96, 87, third overall DB, 4.58, 4-yard four dash, 
really good vertical jump, good broad jump, top five safety prospect, really, really good player. Comparison to Minka Fitzpatrick, who is one of the best like hybrid linebacker safeties in the NFL. He should be really good football intelligence. And Brian Branch looks to be very, very good. Like, I would want him on my team, especially because we have such a massive need of safety with such a disappointing safety room last season. But Lucas Van Ness also has the potential to be incredible. Only the seventh rated edge, but this is a very edge heavy class. Same speed in 40 as Brian Branch. Really good broad jump, good bench press. It's just, he needs a little bit more of finesse moves. Really, really, really strong player. And, but safety, in my personal opinion, is more of an immediate need for the Packers over edge. Like, yeah, we still need edge, but it's not like we don't have any starters we still have Preston Smith Sean Gary is going to come back halfway through he's an Ibarre has been decent so I think safety is a lot more of a pressing need than edge at the moment because Adrian Amos free agent Darnell Savage has been crap Rudy Ford free agent and those guys are, are guys I want starting anymore I don't think Amos is going to walk we don't want him he was terrible last year Savage has been terrible but Brian Branch is regarded as a really good safety high football IQ a guy who we want back there so I with 15th overall pick I'm taking Brian Branch safety out of Alabama I think the Packers really want this guy and I really want him to Lucas Van Ness I I would want you to but it's just I think Brian Branch feels a more immediate need for the Packers so 15th overall Brian Branch and 16th overall Paris Johnson Jr. Roderick Jones, Lucas Van Ness goes to the Lions, of course. Jordan Addison to the Buccaneers, Brian Brees to the Seahawks, Michael Mayer to the Chargers, Nolan Smith to the Ravens, Khalid Jacansi to the Vikings, Dalton Kincaid to the Jaguars, John Robinson to the Giants, Deontay Banks to the Cowboys, Osiris Torrance, then Anton Harrison, Cam Smith, Emmanuel Forbes, and then Zay Flowers. All right, let's see who we get. Darnell Wright, Drew Sanders, Antonio Johnson, Jalen Hyatt, Trent Simpson, Mazzy Smith, Josh Downs. All right, let's see who we got here. Now this one, I want to try to get edge. And there are Two guys here who I think could be really, really interesting with Felix and Duke Uzama, <clears throat> who was very, very good out of Kansas State. Every down edge, really good, six foot four, two hundred fifty-five pounds. And Adichon Adewobore, who has flown all draft boards with this incredible combine. So let's go ahead and take a look at their results and. <clears throat> Kansas State. So, overall, eight overall edge to right behind Lucas Van Ness, according to NFL Network. 6.34, if it should be a plus starter. <clears throat> Comparison to Dante Fowler Jr., which is very good. Heart Ed Project, long playing. <clears throat> Not really a, the greatest run defender out there, but a really good passer, pass rusher. But... Alan Sell starter, high intensity, tightness of the lower half, but could be really, really good. And then, of course, the star out of everything everyone's talking about out of Northwestern is Edible Ore, who is incredible. Seventh overall, freakishly fast 40, really good breast pat, pat <coughs> bench press. Sorry, I'm coughing, so getting over sick. Apologize. Position a little tweener, a little short for interior. It's a really good block, gauge block as well, but below average awareness to many missed tackles. It's not really someone there. So with this pick, I'm going to go with Felix and Adudegi Uzoma. He seems to be more of a polished edge. 
whereas Adebayore is more like an in-between guy. We don't really need any D-line. We need pure edge rusher because we struggle with pass rush, and Felix seems to be a better edge rusher than Adebayore. So we're going to go with um, Felix and Aduke Uzama, edge rusher out of K-State. And then Dar they took Darnell Washington that high. I didn't expect him to go 44. I thought he might have lasted in the 50s, and I would have traded down. But for another player that we're going to try to get, though, is a tight end. Not really worth trading pick. And the only one that's really still on the board at the moment is Luke Musgrave, the tight end out of Oregon State, who still is pretty, pretty good. He missed some time last year, but he looks to be really good. 6'6", 250 pounds, really good vertical threat. Kind of like a Travis Kelsey type of without the run blocking, <laughs> who he, what she has struggled with. But if Darnell Washington is on the board, Musgrave is a guy I want to try to get in the second round because I think he's still really, really good. Let's go and take a look at his profile so far at Oregon State. Luke Musgrave. Comparison to Dallas Goddard, who is a really, really good tight end. Uh, 4.6140 yard dash, which is pretty decent. A little limited, but good on tape. Good hips and feet. Good footwork. Makes good at the same point of attack. Uh, really bad run blocker. Kind of like a Mike Gusecki type guy who the Packers have been linked to in potential trades. But we could get him in the second round of the draft, and I think he should be able if he's here, I want to take him, and especially if Darnell Washington isn't taken. I don't know why the Falcons took him this because they got Kyle Pitts, but that's just me. But we'll go Luke Musgrave, tight end out of Oregon State. So far, this draft is going pretty, pretty good for the Packers, if I do say so. We got a receiver. We got a safety. We got an edge. We got a tight end. We got all the needs I think the Packers need with all really, really good players. All right, let's see here. Ooh, another receiver who I think is really good. I've drafted in the past before with in Nathaniel Dell, who was incredible out of Houston, who looks to be more of a slot guy. Movable weapon, did a lot in the slot and, reg and wide out. He can do anything. Packers still need a, a slot guy. Just because Randall Cobb's not going to be there. Nathaniel Udell, I I really like as a prospect. Really good production out of Houston. Let's see here. Where is Houston? Tank Dell. That's a nice name. Six rate wide receiver. Darnell Mooney. But really, really good route runner. He is definitely a Sunday frame, so not someone the Packers normally take. But I think he could be an incredible weapon. 5'8", 165 pounds. So he's definitely a small guy. But we've seen that work in the NFL. And so. And he is a guy who was off the block. So I think if he's there, I think the Packers should take him. Get another good wide receiver. So. We have four really good young receivers in Christian Watson, Romeo Dobbs, then in this we've got Quentin Johnson, and then as a big guy and Nathaniel Dell as a tiny slot receiver. So draft Nathaniel Dell, wide receiver out of Houston, I think would be really, really good. Do 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 Okay here and now we're back to pick 116 and i see a prospect i liked in my previous draft video on trevius hodges tomlinson if you know what i like you understand why he had only gave up 28 receptions on 81 total targets 365 yards only gave up two touchdowns three inches of pass rating against a 42.5 in the big 10 12 was just incredibly air raid coverage guy he is a smaller receiver so Anderson's biggest receiver might be a little interesting. But let's go and take a look at him again in what they have here on NFL Network with Hodges Tomlinson. Eighth-rate corner, 
mentioned to be an average starter, I think would be good for the Packers. A 4.4 and a 40 yard dash, a 39 inch vertical. Duke Shelley comparison, explosive athletes, which should be really, really good. Low percentage completion target against because some other sort of intermediate, which the Packers have struggled with in the past. 18 pass defenses in 2022. Good run supporting guy. He did struggle with penalties a bit and lack of size against bigger guys, but something you can scheme against because he shouldn't have to go against big guys when he got Eric Stokes and Jair Alexander. He can be a really good slot or nickel corner, and especially if you move over to Douglas at safety with Brian Branch, I think could be he could be an excellent addition to this defense. I really like Hodges Tomlinson, so right now, and then I'm going, yeah, let's go ahead and pick him. Trevius Hodges Tomlinson, corner out of TCU with the 116th overall pick, and now we got a little bit of time to wait until we get our next pick. But overall, I am loving this mock draft I have. If this is how it turns out in real life, oh my goodness, I'd be ecstatic as a Packers fan. All right, so now we get to the fifth round. There's a couple of interesting players here. Dwayne McBride is someone I've taken before as well. And Dorian Williams, a linebacker, but I really like Dwayne McBride because I think the Packers should take a running back in like the fifth early third day because Aaron, we don't know how much longer Aaron Jones is going to be on the team. AJ Dillon's contract is going to be needed, extended. So we need to get, a, and we need a solid third back, especially with them struggling with injuries in the past. And Dwayne McBride looks incredible as a third running back, especially more of a downhill runner. But footwork for a 250 pound back, really, really good. Could, could be a better passer, but Let's take a look at what NFL Network has to say for him out of UAB. Dwayne McBride. Seventh overall back. Good good backer with a potential development starter. It's exactly what the Packers need. 5'10", 209 pounds. Similar to Marlon Mack, who is a solid running back. Productive runner with physical athletic traits. Um, third down value is not good, but... That could be worked on, especially in Green Bay, who developed really good pass catching backs. Like AJ Dillon is a decent pass catcher now, but he can be really, really good. I think so, and I think the Packers do need to pick up a running back. As I said, for the day when we don't have Aaron Jones or AJ Dillon anymore, having one in a wing, developing, being a solid third option, I think is good. So it's going to take Dwayne McBride out of UAB in the fifth round. Go ahead and pick up the pace a little bit just so we can get to our next pick. A comp, a comp pick here in the fifth round. So there's a couple of players here I'm interested in. Kobe Turner, D lineman out of Wake Forest. Looks to be very, very good. Really good hurry rate. Three sacks out of Wake Forest. Really high grade. So let's take a look at him real quick. Just because he fell to us here. Wake Forest. He didn't participate in the Combine. So no stats there. Yasir Abdullah out of Louisville. Ooh. 11 sacks, 15 hits, 33 hurries in 13 games played. Loss of an outside tackle edge. 6'1", 242 pounds. Let's see if he is there. Sir Abdullah, highest rated guy out of Louisville. So, 11th overall linebacker. So, he's kind of like a linebacker edge type hybrid guy. 4.4740 time, which is pretty good. 1.6 10 yard split. Good vertical jump. So, most likely be a 3 4 edge rusher for the Packers. Impressive production. Good muscle mass. Size and length are a little bit below, but he most likely be a rotational guy. But he seems to be a very solid player, not really going to wow you with his talent. But overall, a solid player to add to our line room, kind of be like an Enigbare type guy. Let's go ahead and draft Yasir Abdullah Edge out of Louisville to add to our edge room.
So now we got quite a long time before we have a shot to pick again. We got a bunch of seventh round picks. Do, 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 do. All right, so now we got a couple linebackers here. Muhammad Diabati out of Utah. 38 tackles. 6'4", 222. And then we want to take Aubrey Miller Jr., who looks really solid out of Jackson State. Let's go and take Aubrey Miller out of Jackson State. This is like just picking guys to see what happens. I don't think we need to take a wide receiver. Let's go and take Hunter Lupecki again. Love taking him. Just for fun. Take Drake Thomas just for the heck of it. A lot of these players are just like guys just to pick. For fun, take Stetson Bennett as a backup because we need to back him now that Jordan Love is here. So we take Stetson Bennett as a backup quarterback. And then take Marshawn Ford, another tight end, just for the heck of it. All right, so let's see what they grade our draft. Overall, I think they graded very highly as an A. So, Quentin Johnson would give us an A+. Plus. If he falls to 13, I would love the Packers to take him. Brian Branch, I think, is an absolute need for the Packers. I don't know why they don't say safety is a need for the Packers, because it is. So, I really like the Brian Branch pick. Then, three straight A's with Felix Anaduki Uzama, Luke Musgrave, Dan Odell, I think is really good. Hodges Tomlinson, I think, would be incredible. Tafane McBride's going to be a good back. Then, you see Adula, good value there. Then, Aubrey Miller Jr., Hunter Lupecki, just for fun. Drake Thomas taking Stetson Bennett as a backup for Jordan Love, just to have a guy. Then Marshawn Ford, tight end out of Louisville as our last pick. Overall, I think this is an excellent draft. If the Packers had this, I'd be happy. Starter, starter, potential starter, potential starter, good slot guy, good slot corner, good third back. Good rotational edge. And then a bunch of guys who can potentially make the team, like Hunter Lupecki, I think would be really good. And Seth Ben has a really solid backup. So overall, that is my third mock draft of the season. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. What you agree with, what you disagree with, what you, who would you rather the Packers take. Because like I was really going between Branch and Van Ness with that 15th overall pick. So be interested to see what you guys think. But let me know down in the comments below, and remember to subscribe to the channel for more. Getting into more some pa more Packers videos, and Brewers are coming up with opening days just around the corner. So more baseball videos are coming out as well. So see you guys again very soon.